So up next we have Ocean, who is a beautiful Ngāti Paro lady like myself, a senior lecturer at Victoria University and most well known for being the face of Project Matauranga on TV. Ocean has research interests in how Matauranga Māori and science interact and she's co-leading a challenge project on exploring perceptions of biotechnical controls of pest wasps. Welcome Ocean. Tēnā koe, tēnā tātou katoa. Um, so last year's predator-free 2050 goal came along with a target for a significant new scientific breakthrough capable of eradicating a small mammalian predator by 2025, as we were reminded earlier today. But a commonly agreed gap in our understanding is whether we as a society would accept and allow the use of such a control if it existed. So this project seeks to answer these questions in the case of wasps by exploring the perceptions of biotechnological controls of German and common wasp populations in particular, with focus on Māori perspectives. Now in 2001, John Early and colleagues published a paper about Māmingi Dai, a new family of proctotrupoid wasp, which is endemic to Aotearoa, New Zealand. At just one to two millimetres in length, it is a tenth of the size of the introduced German and common wasps. Um, using their own field surveys, observations and previous samples um, and studies, Early and Co. described two distinct insects, Maminga marisi and Maminga rangi. Um, and they unified them into the, the family Maminidae, so these names are theirs. According to the Williams Dictionary, which is kind of like the linguistic bible for Māori students, um, Maminga variously means to beguile, to play pranks with, to pretend, mysterious, and with guile. They also point out, as you can see here, um, that maminga can mean a trickster and mystifying um, and puzzling. A uh, co-researcher on this project, Austin, went on to explain that um, it appears to be a composite of two unrelated wasp groups, with a front end typical of one group and the back end of another. While these maminga are by no means the only endemic species of wasp, maminidae presents a beguiling touchstone um, and position from which to contribute to this issue of introduced wasps. In any acts of naming, humans project onto the named. So although Early's 2001 paper doesn't explicitly name maminga as a trickster wasp, subsequent literature played up this aspect. Um, and trickster may not actually be a very good reflection on the innate nature of this wasp, but nonetheless the moniker is pretty appealing on several counts. The evasion of notice by virtue of its tiny size, its apparent localization in Aotearoa, its preference for certain habitat types for unknown reasons, and its evasion of categorization by pretending to be two other insects. And it resonates with our oral histories, Maui, our trickster man-god folk hero, the scientists' state of being baffled and mystified by the apparent similarity of some of Maamingi Dai's features to other wasps is a reflection on the observer more than the observed and on the systems that, that those observers work within. So this consideration is important, I think, in reflecting on the discourse that surrounds pest wasps. Um, I will not disagree that stings from the common and German wasps are painful and can be life-threatening. However, amongst other things, um, wasps have been labelled angry, bandits, ruthless villains, dangerous invaders, um, and this justifies us in being just as ruthless back at them, right? For instance, we must wage a war on wasps. Um, this kind of trash talk is not confined to wasps. The listener headlined its feature article in response to the predator-free New Zealand announcement, Natural Born Killers, that's inside this um, and when I showed this um, image to an Alaskan audience a few weeks ago, um, they thought it was quite interesting to see um, the juxtaposition of the pests um, on, the, on, the, on the cover there. So anyway, I have some sympathy with um, Jamie Steer when he says that our wars on pests are malicious. He also says that if you're searching around for the correct words to frame what we're doing, it's not battle or fight, but rather extermination or massacre. And through all this, I'm mindful of how Moana Jackson likened the scientific cloak of truth to the religious cloak of truth that is bound up with colonisation. 
on GM, uh, he pointed out that the scientific cloak of truth can dispossess other ways of knowing. So I'm on alert for signs of scientific evangelism in this project and in other projects. Uh, and that sort of thing reveals itself in different ways um, regarding our methods for seeking public opinions, a social license to operate. So we have to, uh, it's just loaded with pitfalls um, and I'm just on the lookout for those. So Steer goes on to suggest reframing the discussion, not as a war to eradicate any species introduced post-settlement, what then of karaka, kiore, etc., but as a management for the environments of the future using respect and kaitiakitanga. If we listen first to the metaphorical maminga, how differently do our questions, discussions and activities evolve in this space? Do we see a war or even a series of battles? Perhaps we do, perhaps not. Uh, what is the place of pest control? What then the place of biotechnology? So as someone who lives in Karori, I directly benefit from the now everyday sight and or sound of tui, kaka, kiriru, even kākāriki in the trees around my house. And they're there thanks to the predator-proof um, fence and ongoing protection, um, countless people hours, preservation efforts at Zealandia Sanctuary. Um, however, I'll confess it took me many years to pay my entry fee to actually visit Zealandia. I vaguely resented that as a long-time resident, my access to the reservoir walk, uh, previously free in my childhood, was cut off. So pest-free efforts, we have to remind ourselves, sometimes marginalise other pu public concerns. In fact, early sanctuaries exhibited what um, James Muir reports as ecological colonialism. Uh, for instance, he mentions uh, Māori being removed from Little Barrier Island in the 1890s to instate a wildlife sanctuary. Government legislation without regard to customary take has also discriminated against Māori, in some cases not just disrupting their access to native species used for kai and other taonga, but removing their mātauranga from lived practice, intergenerational transmission and even collective memory, as reported by uh, Y262 and other, um, and other literature. Nonetheless, Māori have actively exercised their kaitiakitanga in multiple ways with different mechanisms to restore balance to ecosystems. Te Tira Whakamātaki, the Māori Biosecurity Network, is a really exciting innovation in this space. So as we heard last night, um, German and common wasps um, thrive and love beech forest in the Nelson Lakes area, their biomass at least equals the biomass of birds, stoats and rodents combined, according to Lester's uh, and Co's um, 2013 paper. They have no natural predators in Aotearoa, New Zealand, as we know. Um, effective uh, protein baiting has been developed, so the newish Vespex is particularly effective at neutralising wasp nests. Um, however, a suite of biotechnological control tools might enable these controls to be more targeted, reducing collateral damage on other species. So in the National Science Challenge project that brings um, researchers together um, with a suite of possible new biotechnological tools, there are four techniques under consideration and exploration by my co-researchers, but I'll just point out on this slide, the mission statement for the project um, is uh, starts with socially acceptable uh, technologies, and that's where my contribution lies. Um, so these are um, the four techniques under consideration, and I won't... Uh, Jack Jacqueline uh, chose not to say anything about these, so I won't either. Um, Except to mention that in some of the pilot discussion work that I've been doing with my 300-level Indigenous knowledge and science students, um, so I, I set them uh, an assignment where they choose a biotechnology and write a submission on it, uh, based upon, um, yeah, write a submission on it. Uh, so they get to sort of, in a sense, vote for one, um, and they can write something that's positive or negative, pro or, or con. Um, and so in a class last year, there was um, quite an even spread across these, these four technologies. Um, there wasn't any favourite that popped up amongst the list, but, and only one student out of 20 chose to um, 
argue against one of the technologies. Interestingly, this year students overwhelmingly chose the Trojan female technique. Um, most had found Gemmell's paper entitled The Trojan Female Technique, a novel, effective and humane approach for pest population control. So just as an aside, put humane in your research um, title and, and students at least will buy into it. Um, so this, this ad was written to attract a thesis student to the project and um, I'm still looking for um, a couple of students for this uh, project at the master's level. So while this description frames wasps as a pest, we've tried to allow room for the question of how notions of kaitiaki, tikanga and mātauranga can um, frame the discourse, can be the starting point from the, uh, the conversation that flows on. Um, yeah, how do and can we exercise kaitiaki tanga if we were to add some tools to our kete? What technologies, if any, can be consisted, considered consistent with tikanga um, and under yeah, what circumstances? So three key values related to the thayao, and I'll just skip to this one here and then come back, sees all earthly inhabitants as interrelated through whakapapa, energised through Modi and humans having distinct responsibilities to act as kaitiaki uh, within and arguably for the system. Um, so uh, within all of this, it's really important to honour the long and ongoing discussion that Māori have been having in relation to genetic modification um, and biotechnologies more generally, which has been going on, as Georgina Stewart alluded to yesterday, uh, for decades. So um, in addition to exploring uh, tikanga in relation to biotech, Māori researchers have also developed a number of decision-making frameworks um, to identify and analyse um, our own ethical standpoints on scientific advances and help to make decisions on these. So Hiriri Moko Mead's sort of pioneering, in a sense, five tests framework offers a series of tikanga-based considerations by which to assess what he calls ngā ahi e ngihamai nei, fires or contentions that um, the modern world throws up. Um, so a metaphor for, for these contentious issues at the time, he was considering things like uh, genetic modification, xenotransplantation, even cloning. Um, arguably trickier issues than um, gene drives on, on species like wasps. So his use of the whakatoki here is quite provocative though. Um, without fire or contention, he argues, our weapons and tools become dull. I mean, those, those things that we have in our kete to make these decisions actually become blunted. So Mead may be arguing that we need pressure from outside, um, lest our unique values and ways of living themselves become untested, dull and unused. In addition, um, Jessica Hutchings' mana wahine framework has certainly been an influence in my thinking. Um, she seeks to counter the effects of colonisation and claim ethical space in the debates regarding biotechnologies. Um, she asks, how will the new technology benefit Māori, Māori women, and honour te, te, te tiriti? Will Māori tino rangatiratanga be enhanced, maintained or degraded? And many other studies have relevance for this work. I've got an, some students have um, done uh, different reviews uh, depending on their, their interest and their focus um, as a part of this, this work. Um, again, honouring that deep literature that already exists in this area. Um, and they include, for instance, Mahinarangi Baker's work on mātauranga related to ngārara insects, Aroha Mead's extensive work, and Roberts's study with Kaitahu, Maui Hudson, etc., etc. So just to conclude, um, and let's see if I've got a final slide. No, not really. Uh, so done right, pest-free islands, whether these are literal islands or bounded sanctuaries, have been shown to support and display indigenous biodiversity, lifting the wairua of tangata and whenua alike. Could the whole of Aotearoa become a pest-free island sanctuary off the coast of the world? How can tikanga and kaitiakitanga not just contribute to the debate, but frame it? Given the cautions, under what conditions might we explore, accept, pilot and allow um, or any one or none of these options, the use of biotechnological controls. Lots of questions. 
There are many voices to be mindful of in this debate, whether they are new, attention-grabbing and strident, like Vespula Germanica, or ancient, small and unobtrusive, like Māminga Rangi. In this project, I'm trying to listen consciously for the sort of marginal voices, uh, the voice of the metaphorical trickster wasp, um, to take careful and considered steps into the future. Cheers. Ocean, um, what are your thoughts on the use of language when we're doing things like battling cancer or fighting crime as comparisons to uh, control of invasive species? Yeah. Um, I, um, yeah, that's a good question. I, I guess with those, there's a... With... with, with Creatures, it feels like there's an externality about them, about um, uh, things that exist in the natural world. And if I sort of draw upon ideas of whakapapa, um, then uh, many of those things we can connect to via that whakapapa. And so that may change and shape the way that you think about and then talk about um, other beings in the natural world. So whether it's a cancer or whether it's um, a wasp. So. Kia ora. Oh, kia ora. Mm.